including food, clothing, housing, and medical care. 1945. We live in a time when social services are being cut at the federal level, so more pressure is on the cities and states to pick up the slack. But San Francisco has wonderful men and women who are at the forefront of dealing with social issues like homelessness, and we have some of the best here today representing dozens of organizations that are working hard to bring some compassion and treat homeless people in a humane, compassionate way. Some of those people, as Mary said, are represented by the organizations in the back of the room. I hope you'll stop by and talk to each and every one of them. Um, miracle Messages teaches you how to, they give you an app, and you on your own phone, when you encounter a homeless person, you can say to them, have you talked to your family in a while? Would you like to talk to your family? And if they don't, yeah, I might, but I don't know how to get a hold of them. So Miracle Messages teaches you how to find people, and then you use the app, and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you a dime. And you can put that person in touch with their family, and they've reunited many, many homeless people with their families just through that little act of kindness using a little bit of technology. And uh, we have Project Homeless Connect, which is, a, I'm going to give it a, a general overview, but I love this organization because of what they do. They go out and they find homeless people who have particular needs, and there are dozens of organizations out there to help the homeless, and they try to direct the person to the organization that's going to help them with that particular need, be it uh, help with mental health issues or drug addiction, or uh, uh, they need um, job skills, or they need medical care, uh, then, then the list goes on. So we've got lots of organizations here that are doing really great. Everybody, this is Colleen Rebecca. She's um, representing St. Anthony's Foundation, which is one of the most tenured, wonderful organizations in San Francisco. I remember when I was a kid, my dad was donating to St. Anthony's Foundation, and I believe that they are uh, either the largest or the second largest provider of meals to the homeless in San Francisco. And Colleen has been a social worker for over 20 years, even though she looks uh, only like 21, so she started very early. 13 of them at St. Anthony's Foundation, where she's the advocacy program lead. Through her position at St. Anthony, she has worked on policy issues related to homelessness, hunger, and poverty in San Francisco and California. She's also a member of the board of directors of the San Francisco Coalition on Homelessness for the last 11 years. St. Anthony's Foundation has provided support to hungry, homeless, and low-income San Franciscans since 1950. St. Anthony's mission is to feed, heal, shelter, clothe, lift the spirits of those in need, and create a society in which all persons flourish. So let's give a big round of applause to that mission statement and to So usually I'm the PowerPoint queen, but I don't have a PowerPoint uh, today. And I think that we can just leave this message up while I'm, while I'm talking and it'll relate to everything that I'm gonna say. Um, the, I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about the history of St. Anthony's. I will um, reassure you that what I'm about to say is not to explain to you what St. Anthony's does and all the things that we do that make us so great and such a great organization, but um, we can always talk about that later if you want to. But I wanna talk about the history of how we came about because I think that it relates to the topic at hand today, which is what does it mean when we think about homelessness and policies responding to homelessness in relation to human rights and specifically the human right to housing? So St. Anthony started um, when our founder, who is Father Alfred Bodecker, um, he was the uh, priest at St. Boniface Church, which is a few blocks down Logan Gate, down this way, in the Tenderloin. Um, and at St. Boniface, they had a long history, um, going back even to the time of the 1906 earthquake, of feeding people that came to the friary, um, providing food and sandwiches for them. And from 1906 
1950, this had been going on, but it was in 1950 that Father Alfred realized, as he was observing people eating sandwiches on the sidewalk, that these are our brothers and sisters, they have the same inherent dignity that we all have, um, and that they should be eating around a table. And so that was how St. Anthony Foundation started, as um, a place to respond to hunger, but to respond with charity, but also with dignity and respect. Um, the dining room opened in 1950, and in going through our archives, I've actually found that we have described ourselves as serving people who are homeless since that time, since 1950, since the days that our doors first opened. Um, we see two challenges in this work. Um, one is to see those who are poor, who are hungry, homeless, ill, people who use legal or illegal substances, as people with inherent worth and dignity and deserving of attaining all of their rights in society. The second challenge is to respond to people's basic need and challenge our community to talk about why poverty exists, to promote justice, and to promote a society where all can flourish. That's at the heart of what we do at St. Anthony's, and it's rooted in um, the, the, tra the tradition of the Franciscans who started the organization, and I think that it is uh, a nice parallel to the idea of thinking about homelessness and the response to homelessness through a human rights lens. Through first this lens of seeing every person that experiences homelessness as a person, with inherent dignity and seeing that when people are experiencing homelessness, they are experiencing the lack of the ability to attain the right to a home. And in the US, we have not um, signed on to the declaration that you know establishes these basic rights for people. Um, but if you think about the way that, you know, the way that we want to think about homelessness, the way that we should be thinking about homelessness and housing, um, think about whether or not you believe that everyone has a right to a home, to shelter, to food, to medical care, to clothing. Um, I'm glad that at the beginning of our time together today, um, we recognize Philip Alston, who is the UN Rapporteur on um, Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, um, because I actually got a chance to meet him, and so did Jennifer, and so did some others of us when he came to San Francisco as part of his mission to investigate um, poverty and human rights in the United States. And one of the things that I will always remember about what he said um, when he came to visit us and came to hear from our community was, he said this, poverty is a choice. It's not a choice that poor people make. It is a choice that people in power and our, pol and our political system and people who are beholden to our economic system make to choose not to respond to poverty, not to see poverty as an expression of the lack of human rights. And he also said, with political will, it could readily be eliminated. And so think about what that means for a very wealthy city in the richest country in the United States. Oftentimes when we think about homelessness, and we think about homeless people, our first question that we ask is, what is wrong with that? Why is it that they're homeless? What choices have they made that have brought them to this position? What is wrong with them isn't the question that I think that we should be asking if we're looking at homelessness from a framework of human rights. What we should be looking at is um, the context in which homelessness and poverty exists. What is wrong with our economic system that we have, that we live in a country 
with systemic racism, systemic classism, systemic um, inequality that expresses itself not just nationally, but also in our city in ways that are more profound than in many, many other places in our country. How does that create what we call homelessness? What, how does that create poverty? How does that create a situation where it can be almost impossible to get out of homelessness, to get out of poverty? What are our systems of power doing to remedy the situation, and what are we doing to make it worse? And as citizens, as people who live in San Francisco, as people who care about this issue, how does our response to homelessness in either entrench it or make it worse? Is our response to homelessness that we call the police when we see someone who is experiencing homelessness on our corner, but then you know the next day we may donate some coats to St. Anthony's clothing program? Is our response to homelessness that when we notice something in the paper about homeless people being cleared out of encampments and only being offered seven days on a mat in the shelter floor, and then nothing after that to call the mayor and say, I think there's something wrong with this? Because our, our response to homelessness needs to be both about justice as well as about charity. We need both. We need to take care of people, and there are many people that can't meet their basic needs today. And we need to be looking at the structures in society that are perpetuating and ensuring that homelessness exists forever. <laughs> and those are um, things that I, I don't think that I need to spell out for you, but they're, um, they're things that would be great to get into maybe in a question or something later. Um, so, The last thing I want to say is um, when I talk about our Franciscan heritage at St. Anthony's and what it means to be a Franciscan organization, I asked our executive director for some advice. And what he told me was he felt that these, that these two things, our Franciscan sort of beliefs and our rights-based beliefs around um, people being able to attain what they need to attain in society. And he said, we're encouraging people who are, when we engage people who are struggling, when we engage people who are poor, who are homeless, when we engage with them, um, we're not trying to change them, but we're trying to change ourselves. When we walk with those who are homeless, attending to their needs, we discover their inherent dignity, and that becomes the impetus to change the social structures that although they may benefit us, they only continue to deny and disempower those struggling for justice. So I'd like to leave you with this thought. What is it that we need to change about ourselves and about our city, even if they may be things that benefit us, that could be something that could lead us to a path where we can actually be a city that provides the right to housing and the right to basic needs for every single person. And instead of asking if people are worthy, we're asking what do we need to do to make this happen? That's it.